So welcome to our webinar. My name is uh, Robert Combier. I'm a Solutions and Marketing Manager here at Rescale. And this webinar is How to Speed Up Ansys 18 with NVIDIA GPUs in the Cloud. It is my sincere and distinct privilege today to host uh, this discussion on how Rescale works with hardware and software partners to deliver the best cloud computing performance and value. We at Rescale are quite excited to announce that we have integrated NVIDIA's P100 into our cloud platform, enabling, frankly, stunning performance gains for engineering workflows. In addition to the artificial intelligence communities, the P100 has created quite a buzz in the FEA and CFD communities, and we're very excited to be able to deliver that, uh, this access to our users, especially those using ANSYS workflows. To help uh, tell this story, we've handpicked some of our partners from uh, ANSYS and NVIDIA, We'll hear from Baska Rajal Gopalan from uh, NVIDIA. He'll share some inside information on the P100, especially versus the incumbent GPU champion, the K80. Next, we'll hear from uh, Wim Slachta, who will share some benchmarks on just how much faster the P100 can be for a variety of ANSYS work workflows. Then I'll go over a brief review of using HPC in the cloud and where GPUs fit into that picture. Uh, lastly, Brian from Rescale will give us a brief demo on running the P100 on Rescale uh, in ANSYS Fluent. Before we get started, though, I want to go over just a couple housekeeping items. First off, we're recording this webinar and we'll be distributing the recording this week, as well as in our newsletter at the end of the month. Secondly, if you have any questions during the webinar, please make sure to type them into the question section of the GoToWebinar panel. We'll be monitoring those during the webinar and we'll address these at the very end. All right, so without further ado, I think we can go to the next slide. Uh, I just wanted to give a brief overview on uh, what the areas of uh, the Rescale platform are GPU enabled. Uh, today we're going to hear from uh, ANSYS and we're going to talk about uh, specifically fluent and mechanical. But as you'll hear from uh, Wim, the, the GPUs can enable many sections or many applications within the ANSYS uh, portfolio. Uh, we also have two configurations currently available on Rescale. Uh, we call that the Obsidian configuration and the Amethyst configuration. And uh, when it comes to my section, I'll go over a little bit more detail about how those work and what the relative performance are for an actual uh, user interface. So just to remind everyone, the key messages are that the ANSYS, uh, Rescale, and NVIDIA are committed to delivering cutting-edge real-world performance and value. Uh, the P100s are now available on Rescale, as I mentioned. The NVIDIA uh, delivers incredible performance with their new Pascal architecture hardware. Uh, ANSYS uh, Fluent and Mechanical 18 are going to be covered today. And uh, using P100s on Rescale delivers uh, actually quite an uh, improvement in cost, performance, and licensing. And I'll get into that uh, during my section. All right, so without further ado, um, Basker, uh, take it away. Oh, thanks, Robert. So in the last 30 years, the industry has improved microprocessor performance by nearly a million times. And as we all know, there's this Moore's law. However, in the last several years, it started to slow down. So you could see that when the performance was about increasing 50% year over year, it started crawling to about only 10% per year. This is due to Denard scaling, where the rate of improvement in physical dimensions of the chip that has actually slowed down. So basically you keep the energy envelope constant while reducing the size of transistors. So that obviously gives you more number of transistors, but there's only so much you could do in terms of the size. And therefore you could see some sort of plateauing on this uh, blue curve. Now, but since the introduction of our NVIDIA CUDA technology about 10 years ago, we were able to increase performance 50% each year, and it continues to do so, and, and will be increasing at the same level for the next several years. And this is all because of the ecosystem of partners and technology we have today. Basically, the whole stack represented on the left-hand side that includes our CUDA architecture, the systems, the algorithms, and all the applications such as you know, ANSYS uh, portfolio of solutions. And some of them in the industry have actually really described this pattern of GPU computing increasing at 50% year over year as, as Moore's law squared. So we are glad to be in this position to offer this 
continual increase in performance with GPU technology. Next slide, please. So before we talk more about the specifics of um, the Tesla GPUs, how does GPU acceleration work? So you've all heard of uh, GPU computing. So GPU computing is actually the use of CPU and the GPU together because GPUs are actually accelerators or coprocessors. A typical application code such as ANSYS, it has different modules represented by these blue and green bars. So some of them are sequential. In fact, most of them are sequential within the code. And so CPUs are best suited for that. And some of them are highly parallel and very compute intensive. And these are represented by these green bars and they're well suited for GPUs. So the combination of, of CPU and GPU actually gives you the speed up that you will see shortly in a few slides. Next slide, please. And Robert just briefly mentioned about the latest and the, one of the uh, recent introductions from NVIDIA called the Tesla P100. So Tesla K80 used to be the most popular data center GPU ever built, but now Tesla P100 is the most powerful data center GPU available on the cloud today with a you know peak floating point performance, 64-bit performance of 4.7 teraflops. And that's about 62% higher than the performance of K80. Now, the P100 actually comes with a single GPU while the K80, the K80 board comes with two GPUs in a, in a single board. Now, from an ANSYS, ANSYS licensing standpoint, you have an advantage with P100 because the way that ANSYS calculates licenses is based on the number of GPUs. So you will see that the performance with P100 is, is superior to K80, and you also have a cost advantage in terms of licensing because you're consuming only one GPU versus two GPUs with K80. And also notice that P100 comes with more memory bandwidth while consuming less power. Next slide, please. So this slide got messed up a little bit. Um, the colors, the gray color is supposed to be green, but basically we've run some benchmarks internally. Now keep in mind, this is on-premise. So NVIDIA has uh, our own you know, data centers, servers that are equipped with all kinds of GPUs. We've done some studies with Tesla K80 and Tesla P P100. And for this particular model, this is one of our customer proprietary model for an automotive uh, engine water cool jacket. It has about five and a half million cells. Uh, they are all run in double precision. And you will notice that we ran this on a dual Xeon core processor. Uh, we ran with uh, multiple configurations from Tesla to Tesla K80 boards, uh, and then with four Tesla K80 boards. So that's actually four GPUs and eight GPUs versus two GPUs and four GPUs in a P100 configuration. You will see that it didn't make much of a difference for this particular problem with two P100s, uh, but notice that the performance is uh, equally good when you compare with the K80, except that it consumes two less GPUs, and that's really wonderful from a licensing standpoint. Now, if you look at the four P100 configuration, the, the performance is more than 20% improvement from a K80. So not only do you see the speed up that's considerable, but you also consume fewer GPUs along the way. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide is supposed to kind of summarize uh, some of the ANSYS solutions, or ANSYS applications that we have run in-house. From a performance standpoint, you could see across the board, we were able to see a whole range of uh, performance improvements, anywhere from 30% you know, speed up in case of uh, Maxwell 3D, all the way up to 3.3x faster. So that's more than 330% faster than a CPU only configuration. Now, of course, performance will vary based on the size of your problem and how well it lends to GPUs. Uh, but these are based on a very minimal set of models uh, that we've run in-house. And certainly as end customers, you all have a whole range of models. And so the potential to see performance much more than what's listed here is, is quite possible. Um, with that, I'll, I'll pass it back. Thank you.
Thank you, Bhaskar. That was a, it was a fascinating view and a great segue to, uh, to our next speaker, uh, Wim from, uh, from ANSYS. Uh, Wim, uh, we're very happy to hear from you on how the P100 affects ANSYS workflows in a little bit more detail. So without further ado, uh, Wim, take it away. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can hear me? Yep, great. Yeah, very good. So first of all, thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity yeah, to give our perspective as an ISV on the usage of uh, the latest NVIDIA card for engineering simulation. Actually, this slide shows you um, um, performance results of our structural mechanics products and is mechanical in release 18.1 support for the yeah the the uh, P100 uh, card has actually been added um, and in addition to the CUDA libraries that have been updated to CUDA 88.0 and um, also the MAPDL kernels um, making use of the NVIDIA graphics card has been tuned so that you get really, really good performance um, on, on the latest uh, GPU cards. Um, this slide actually shows the results of uh, our hardware benchmark suite across different solvers, across different model sizes, um, and, and you clearly notice yeah, the, the relative speed up compared to a CPU-only calculation. Yeah, on the left-hand side, you see uh, on running on two CPUs, CPU cores, uh, versus the addition of a P100. And on the right hand side, you see uh, running on eight CPU cores only versus uh, the addition of a P100. And again, speed ups are, are tremendous. Ne next slide. Actually, this is a slide in, in which I like to share with you a few, few tips. Yeah, tips for what typical models do now benefit yeah, from, from GPUs. So as, as you can uh, read on this slide, and sorry, it's about a wordy slide, but GPU performs best when there is obviously a lot of solver work for a particular simulation. And current recommendations are really to focus on models with solid elements, yeah? solid finite elements versus shell elements, which are 2D. And to consider then GPU acceleration when a model reaches yeah, 500 um, uh, K degrees of freedom or more, yeah, because those models clearly benefit the most. Uh, also better performance when running in distributed memory parallel pro processing mode yeah, uh, over shared memory. That is in general recommended anyway yeah, to run in DMP mode versus shared memory parallel mode, still coming across customers who are using shared memory parallel only, but for sure distributed parallel. And now with GPU acceleration, uh, you will further benefit from GPU uh, acceleration. Then on this slide, you will also notice um, yeah, that the PCG iterative solver, the use of a lower left values results in more solver computations offloaded to the GPU and uh, and so these uh, settings should definitely be uh, considered for enabling further uh, acceleration uh, using GPUs. Next slide. So th this slide is actually a good reason also for considering GPU computing. And that's actually the need for reducing power consumption. That becomes more and more relevant, obviously, once you are considering running uh, on the cloud or uh, whether that is uh, yeah, um, on-prem or um, off-prem and using the rescale. So, and here is actually an example of a study that showed that adding GPUs could result in a two point, uh, yeah, in, a, in a two X speed up while reducing power consumption by almost 40%. So that, that's definitely to keep in mind uh, also using um, uh, GPU computing for uh, for fluent calculations. Next slide. This is actually a slide that I'd like to share because it, it gives you also here some tips on what models do benefit the most. Um, yeah, GPU ex uh, acceleration is most visible for models with relatively high 
proportion of uh, of computations in the AMG in the AMG solver. So particularly pressure-based coupled solvers having a high degree, high percentage of AMG, um, and that benefit the most. Also models, fluent models with fine meshes and low dissipation problems have uh, typically high percentage of AMG computations and therefore benefit the most. Also not noteworthy to mention is that the whole problem must fit on a GPU. And here also on this slide, I'm showing a few yeah, a few uh, tips. So each million cells approximately need four gigabyte of GPU memory, and um, and and using that as a as a rule of the thumb, you know also how many yeah, GPUs you should uh, you should enable. Next slide. This is actually an example, um, a few examples, three examples actually. Um, um, uh, showing the performance of our high frequency electromagnetic solver, in this case, the FEM finite element solver of HFSS, which is, as you may know, the industry standard for simulating high frequency electromagnetic fields in the frequency domain. Um, uh, you see here tremendous uh, speed up um, and also relative to the, the K80 card, yeah, uh, particularly for the Hitachi car example, uh, you will see further improvement thanks to the P100 over the, the K80, for example, and even more compared to the CPU only calculation. Next slide. On this slide, actually, I'm showing um, the Maxwell, the low frequency uh, product of ANSYS, the eddy current solver that computes steady state yeah, magnetic fields at, at a given frequency. Um, and it's actually based on uh, the same multifrontal sparse direct solver as HFSS um, um, uh, that I showed on the, on the previous slide. Um, however, um, the, uh, the patterns of Maxwell and HFSS are, uh, of matrices are quite different. So GPU can be used to speed up the simulation when the matrix size is larger than Two million, and um, and here I'm showing an example of uh, again um, that um, P100 uh, exceeds the performance of P100 exceeds the performance of the K80, and and even more compared to a CPU only calculation. Next slide. So also here I, I'd like to share a few tips and tricks, so to say. Yeah, what benef what uh, uh, models do benefit from GPU acceleration? In particular, um, yeah, GPUs uh, accelerate the hybrid solve and HFSS transients. That's pretty clear. Yeah, um, the multifrontal sparse direct solve and HFSS and Maxwell 3D can be accelerated by CPUs uh, when the matrix size is larger than two million, for example. Uh, other factors such as the matrix front size. And the, and the sparsity pattern also impact has an impact on the speed up, as I can um, as I can notice, uh, as you can notice on this slide. Um, and um, by the way, also the HFSS transient uh, code automatically detects if a problem can fit on the GPU, and um, and if not, then it will fall back on on CPU. So uh, quite uh, quite useful to know. Next slide. Last, I would say, but not least, is uh, and a very common question uh, that that we get from customers about GPU accelerated uh, energy simulations is how will licensing work? And on this slide, actually, uh, I'm addressing that question. Uh, first of all, we enable GPU acceleration through all Ansys HPC product licenses. So including ANSYS HP in the individual HPC licenses, the HPC PAC licenses, as well as the HPC workgroup licenses. And more important, also we will treat or we treat a GPU socket just like one CPU core. So each HPC task, each HPC individual license can enable a CPU core or a CPU GPU socket. So also, if you are on an entry level, 
yeah, HPC user, you can already start benefiting from GPUs at a, at a relatively lower, low, yeah, low count level. And uh, just a few examples here: one HPC pack can actually enable up to um, five GPUs max. Um, uh, for example, for Fluent, uh, you can never enable more GPUs than CPU cores, though. Um, but having said that, um, yeah, uh, the HPC licensing is is very generous uh, in terms of GPU acceleration and will enable you uh, to take advantage of GPU acceleration um, through licensing. By the way, GPU supported uh, fuel factor and ray tracing modules and ANSYS Fluent won't require any additional HPC license. It comes with the standard license by default. And this is uh, what I uh, wanted to share with you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, to talk. Thank you so much, Wim. That was uh, absolutely fascinating. Um, we're very happy to have uh, your viewput, and it's, it's certainly very helpful to uh, all of the, uh, the user base to understand exactly uh, what the extreme performance gains and the HPC pack requirements are. Um, this is a reminder to our audience, please feel uh, free to submit questions in the panel to uh, Baskar and Wim, and we'll go over those at the end. I'd now like to give a brief overview of using cloud to deliver HPC. And uh, to start, uh, I'd like to take you to the sort of perspective of a person who's interested in buying a performance automobile. So given two choices, a, a four-cylinder or a V8, you might, uh, you might both be able to meet the 300 horsepower sort of power requirement. But uh, there are two different ways and efficiency levels of achieving that. Uh, the top, shown the, with the VW, is uh, roughly 40 miles per gallon in terms of efficiency. And the, uh, the muscle car below is uh, roughly half that at 18 miles per gallon. The key difference there is, is comes down to technology enablement. And for this example, the turbocharger is what delivers that. It essentially delivers, uh, for the four-cylinder turbo, you have, uh, from a day-to-day -day basis, a typical load cycle, you have the efficiency of a four-cylinder, which is much better than an eight-cylinder V8. But when you have that power requirement, you're able to put your foot down and, and pass a car or accelerate away uh, with the help of a turbo. And it's very similar to the situation that a lot of our customers have when uh, uh, shopping for compute performance. If you look at uh, the utilization over time in this chart of an HPC customer, you'll find that it's in fact a very varied load. Uh, some days they may have very low system utilization needs, and some days that may rise dramatically. This parallels the development process for products, uh, particularly sophisticated engineering products. So if we were to size our system for the maximum power required, uh, that in fact would be fine, but you would have a very low utilization uh, when you're off peak, so to speak. And this is a situation similar to the V8 muscle car. Sure, you have all the power when you want it. However, you're paying a penalty for that in either unused or idle uh, HPC resources. Uh, typically, this might cost one of our customers $20 million for this uh, capital expenditure. However, if we size it for the sort of average load, uh, like, like this, this is the four-cylinder non-turbo, um, you, you have a very low idle time in your, uh, in your resources. However, you're unable to meet the demand uh, when, uh, when that rises dramatically. And the unfortunate result of this in terms of the engineering workflow is queuing. And queuing uh, has a very negative impact, of course, towards uh, uh, development and time to market. And this system might cost uh, $4 million for a typical on-premise uh, on uh, setup. So if we instead think about uh, how we can address this demand with a turbocharger, uh, this is where cloud really steps in. You can uh, take advantage of very low unused resources uh, with a turbocharger because you're not paying for that, per that performance that you don't need. And uh, a, pot a potential user strategy for a cloud would be to have all of that power whenever you want it. And that, that is, of course, what the, the core re uh, value of rescale is. Now, how this fits in with GPUs and accelerators, uh, you can see that uh, the workload, if we divide that up a little bit, this peak power can be handled by the GPUs and your 
standard uh, everyday workloads, maybe don't need quite as much acceleration, can just be handled by the CPUs. So this is one potential way that a, a typical Rescale customer having uh, a complete uh, selection of architectures to run on can, uh, can configure their, their load requirements. So uh, to sort of put uh, some, some emphasis behind what both Basker and Wim are saying, we did a couple benchmarks ourselves. And uh, the first one that we ran was uh, on ANSYS Mechanical. This is with the, uh, the CG2 benchmarking model. We use the PCG solver. Uh, it's just over 14 million degree of freedom. It's a, a static linear analysis. So the first uh, benchmark that we ran was 1K80 against 1P100. And you can see just from this particular um, example that it's almost a 35% uh, increase in performance. The caveat to this is unfortunately, uh, we don't offer 1P100 alone to our customers. That's with uh, only a specific benchmarking configuration. Uh, we actually only offer eight CPU of four P100 uh, uh, in the Amethyst core type, but we just wanted to show you an apples to apples comparison about what one K80 and one P100 would look like uh, in a cloud environment. This uh, chart also shows you the power of scaling. So we ran on one, one P100 as well as two P100s and then the full Amethyst four P100 setup. And you can see the definite improvement in power and uh, uh, solution time, roughly one third of the original uh, single K80 uh, process time. Right? Now, if we look at uh, ANSYS Fluent, uh, we, this is a 15 million cell truck model, uh, 2000 iterations. Uh, for this setup, we did a little bit uh, different of a benchmark. We ran more of an apples to oranges in the actual rescale configuration. So in this case, that's 16 CPUs and eight K80s in the Obsidian core type. And we ran that against the uh, single uh, Amethyst core type, which is basically half of the CPUs and half of the GPUs. So even with that uh, halving of the architecture, you still see a substantial improvement in performance time. Uh, roughly, I think it's 20%, if you want to hit the next, 14% yeah, faster. That's with half of the GPU count and half of the CPU count. Just to illustrate uh, how that might affect uh, the value from a resale customer. Uh, the Amethyst core type uh, listed here in this benchmark is actually 12% cheaper than the uh, K80 configuration that we ran. So if you were to think about it in short, it was just 14% faster for 12% less. That's the power that we offer on Rescale and the value of uh, going with the cloud platform. Uh, of course, that does require uh, with the lower CPU and GPU account, uh, a different HPC pack requirement although this slide is actually not technically correct that half of the ANSYS HPC packs are required because there are in fact eight CPUs in our P100 configuration. But uh, when you're sharing those HPC packs in a larger organization, uh, there are definitely some scaling advantages of going with the P100. So I'd like to now show you uh, a little bit of uh, proof behind the pudding. And to, for that, we're gonna introduce uh, Brian Fan. He is in our engineering team here at Rescale, and he will walk us through a demo of running Rescale on, uh, on ANSYS Fluent with the P100. Brian, take it away. Cool. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, what I'm going to be demoing for you guys is how to set up an ANSYS Fluent um, analysis on the P100 GPUs. So uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the Rescale platform, uh, when you first log into um, Rescale, you'll be presented with this page. Um, we refer to this as the job list page. Um, here you can find um, jobs that are executing, jobs that have completed, and also uh, jobs that job configurations that you have saved. So to set up a job, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the top left to create a new job. Um, the first, uh, at Rescale, we've outlined all of the steps here, and you do want to follow this order just because for each software you select, we've actually optimized that software on particular hardware, and you'll be presented with those optimized hardware, uh, the optimized hardware um, after choosing your software. So first thing we want to do is upload an input file. Um, so to do this, um, you can either upload from your local computer, um, or um, we can also, uh, if you have files on the cloud already, uh, you can select them from there. 
So for this demo, I actually have my input files um, loaded onto the cloud already. So I'm going to choose um, use files from cloud storage. So, and here we can select an ANSYS Fluent Journal file and an ANSYS uh, Fluent Case file. So let's select those. And then, and the next step we want to take is to select our software. So here we can search for ANSYS Fluent and select that. And the version that we'll be using is 18.0 on GPUs. Um, at Rescale, we've um, created uh, various job templates for the software that you select. Uh, we want to make running HPC jobs as easy as possible. So this can be as easy as just uh, specifying your input file. So for this example, um, I'm going to specify an MPI flavor. So I'm going to go with Open MPI, and uh, I'm going to specify my input um, journal file, which is right here. So with a simple copy and paste, you can specify that there. Okay. And the next step we want to take is um, choose our licensing option. Um, if you have um, an existing license server, um, you can choose this option and you can basically specify your license server information. Alternatively, uh, you can use on-demand licensing as well. Um, for this demo, I will be using on-demand licensing. Um, so uh, now we're, we're on the step to uh, choose our hardware. So we want to run on P100. So I've selected our Amethyst core type. And finally, we can, there is a optional post-processing step where you can specify a post-processing command. But lastly, we will want to review um, basically our job setup. And finally, uh, we can submit our job. Okay, and once your job is submitted, uh, we do various um, val uh, input validation, and uh, we also do a few precondition checks as well. Some of these checks include whether you still have whether um, you have sufficient funds to run your job, um, and after your input ha input has been validated and the preconditions have been checked, um, we will begin provisioning um, the cloud hardware and. Uh, eventually your job will begin running on that hardware. So um, I actually have a job currently running. So um, we're gonna, I'm just going to fast forward to that quickly. Um, so um, when your job is running, uh, so as you can see before, uh, it took two minutes to validate our input, uh, one minute to get our um, hardware up and running. And uh, as you can see, uh, my job has been running for 46 minutes. Um, with on the Rescale platform, we have a live tailing feature. Uh, this feature allows you to tail um, your output files. Uh, for example, um, we have a file called processoutput.log. This file contains your standard input and output. So here you can check um, whether or not your simulation is running as expected and if you have encountered any errors. So by clicking on this, um, I can see that um, my analysis is just is still going through its iterations. Um, so after when your job is completed on the Rescale platform, we try to offer a end-to-end -end workflow. So as you can see, um, my job completed in two hours and 11 minutes. Here on the results tab, you can see all of um, our output files. and. Uh, uh, so by clicking on this, button, this visualize button on the top left, uh, top right corner, um, what you can do is launch an ANSYS Fluent um, desktop. And uh, with this desktop in the cloud, you can uh, visualize your results. So, and like spinning up a job, uh, you can specify your license information here. And as you can see, um, the job that I, I just ran, um, has, is attached to the desktop. And finally, I, I am going to launch this desktop. Okay. And uh, once your desktop is launched, um, we basically configured uh, various ANSYS products uh, shortcuts on the, uh, on the desktop for easy access. And uh, here I have the um, 
the, the model opened in um, Ansys Fluent and uh, this, uh, on this desktop running in the cloud. Um, so that is going to conclude my demo. I'm going to pass it back to Robert, who will be moderating our Q&A session. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, if you have any additional questions for Brian, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, he really loves this stuff, so he's be, he'd be more than happy to, uh, to help you with any, uh, any additional information. Uh, that's it. Let's go ahead and take it back. So I want to summarize uh, the key messages from today's webinar once more. Uh, as you all know, P100s, we're very happy to have those on Rescale. Uh, NVIDIA has been absolutely amazing at increasing their technology uh, year after year uh, with the P100s over the K80s. ANSYS, of course, is not letting any of this pass them. Uh, and mechanical and fluent, uh, we've demonstrated those on the platform, and uh, I believe uh, we won't have uh, too much longer until those uh, other software packages that are offered uh, from ANSYS on the Rescale platform are also GPU enabled. And then overall, using P100s on a Rescale delivers uh, increased performance and licensing, uh, and as, as well uh, a, a more flexible business model for your uh, development teams. All right, so I think with, with that, we can go ahead to the next slide. And I just want to announce that uh, we are very happy to offer $1,500 in Rancis, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Rescale credits for ANSYS proof of concepts. Uh, we have a 45-day ANSYS evaluation period uh, that has a little bit of an approval process that we go through with sales. But uh, you, having attended this webinar, you will receive an email about that. Please don't hesitate to join or ask any questions about how you can apply. So with that uh, said, we'll go ahead and go to Q&A. And I can see that we have quite a few questions coming in from our, uh, our moderator. But I want to show, uh, let's see, let, let's pull those up here. OK, first question, how configurable are the CPU and GPU configurations on Rescale? OK, I can answer that. that that's a great question. Um, so as we showed in our um, benchmarking section for Rescale, uh, we showed one, two, and four P100s. Unfortunately, we can't offer that specifically to our customers at this time because uh, we work with a variety of cloud partners and uh, we have to accept their particular configurations. Uh, while we could actually run that in a benchmarking situation, uh, we, we don't offer single cores for the reasons of security. Uh, Rescale is very uh, serious about offering security and we would hate to have any crossover across cores uh, uh, compromise that. So I hope that answers your question. If not, please don't hesitate to reach out to sales at Rescale. Uh, next question. Are all types of ANSYS Fluent Sim uh, CFD calculations now ca GPU capable? If not, please define which types may benefit. Uh, Wim, do you want to take that one? So the question is, are all types of ANSYS Fluent CFT calculations now GPU enabled. No, not not all. So uh, they are they may be enabled, but they may not all benefit from GPU acceleration. As I mentioned on my slides, uh, I gave some tips. So for example, the pressure-based coupled solver do benefit the most uh, if there is a high proportion of AMG in in the, in the workload. Then they will also benefit the most. From, um, from GPU acceleration. If you're using another solver, you can run on GPUs, but it will not help you a lot in terms of time savings. So we do definitely recommend you, if you want to use GPU acceleration for uh, fluent workloads, then um, it may be switched from the solver to a pressure-based coupled solver, for example. Uh, if possible, uh, of course, other yeah, uh, like the um, um, yeah, discrete or ordinate um, uh, radiation model uh, that benefit a few uh, yeah, a few frag um, ray tracing calculation do benefit from GPUs as well. Thank you very much, Wim, for that answer. Um, if you have any additional questions, again, just please don't hesitate to reach us at sales at Rescale. Uh, next question is, have you started testing NVIDIA Volta GPUs compared to Pascal GPUs? How do they fare for your products? I'm going to direct this question to uh, Basker. Basker, uh, you want to unmute and uh, give it a swing? Yes. 
Um, so as we all know today, what's available on Rescale is the Tesla P100. Next up is uh, what we call as the Volta architecture. So it's a Tesla V100. And keeping up with the trend that I described earlier about 50% improvement in theoretical performance year over year. So the V100 actually offers seven peak floating point operations, teraflops. So that's actually 50% more than P100. And it has about 20% improvement in memory bandwidth. We've begun some early look at the Tesla V100 with ANSYS. We are getting about uh, a similar performance or higher based on some of the problems we've run. But unfortunately, we don't have those uh, results to share yet. But you will see that something down the road. And also to keep in mind, V100 was announced a couple of months ago. And it's now beginning adoption by different hardware vendors and cloud providers. So you should see that in the market soon. Thank you very much, Pascal, for that answer. Um, let's see one more question here. Uh, could runtimes be improved with better interconnect? So somebody watching uh, caught uh, caught the interconnect speed. So uh, theoretically, uh, yes, uh, interconnect would increase runtimes or uh, improve runtime run, runtimes, I should say. But at the, that really focuses on um, how much message passaging passing happens uh, in the run, and uh, it's fairly, I would say, model specific. Um, we're more than happy at Rescale to uh, work with you to uh, really tune and optimize your particular workflow. So if you have something that's interconnect uh, candidate for, uh, for acceleration, uh, that's something that we would work with the engineering team to, to make sure that that's uh, streamlined for you. Great question. All right, next question. Uh, what is the price difference between P100 and others, 2x cost or higher? So I covered that uh, very briefly. Uh, in the um, uh, in my section, uh, really the easiest way to see our latest pricing is just to sign up and uh, go to the uh, hardware page of Rescale, and you can see very directly how much the core types cost. The uh, for the configurations we ran that were uh, close to being equal performance, uh, where the P100 uh, core type was I think 14% faster. I think the per hour cost there was roughly $10 for the P100. And I think just over $11 per core hour for the Obsidian uh, equivalent um, package. So you can see roughly 12% increase uh, uh, in, in cost efficiency uh, for a 14 increase, 14% 14 increase in speed. So I hope that answers your question there. Um, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much all we have. Uh, if anyone has any additional questions, go ahead and shoot those in now. Uh, let's see here. Please re provide the slides. I missed the beginning of the presentation. <laughs> okay, so that's a great way to wrap this up. Uh, absolutely, we are um, sharing the uh, recording of this webinar. Uh, it'll be available in our newsletter and also uh, on our YouTube channel. And I believe that we also share the, uh, the slide deck as well with that. If not, please just don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we're very happy to, uh, to talk to you guys and, uh, and answer questions uh, that you may have. So with that said, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's webinar. I want to give one big thank you again to Basker and uh, Wim for joining us from NVIDIA and ANSYS. We really appreciate your partnerships. Without this, none of this could be possible. So that said, guys, have a great Wednesday, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.